Elementary music teacher friend, you love what you do, but you might feel unappreciated and, in fact, unseen some days. You may even feel like you're on a music teacher island and just want to connect with other music teachers who can relate to both your struggles and wins when it comes to teaching elementary music. I get you and understand completely the feelings you're having. That's why each and every week, the Elementary Music Teacher Podcast will provide you with solo and guest episodes that will help you realize you're not alone in your music teaching journey. Throughout each episode, my goal is for you to be able to walk away with actionable steps and ideas to help you feel like you're ready to take on the new week with whatever challenges may be thrown your way. Hi, I'm your host, Jessica Peresta, and I'm so glad you're here. Whether you're at home, in your car, in the shower, or wherever else you're listening, grab your cup of coffee or whatever other beverage is nearby and listen in to the Elementary Music Teacher Podcast. Hi, I'm Adam Geis. I'm David Lurch. We're hosts of the EdTech Distilled Podcast, which is a part of the Education Podcast Network. Shows on the network are individually owned. Opinions expressed may not reflect others. Find other interesting education podcasts at edupodcastnetwork.com. Welcome back to the podcast. I'm so excited to be back with another solo episode today. Today's topic is about 10 engaging ways to bring classical music into the music room. Now, I know that there are many thoughts around bringing classical music into your music classroom, whether it is the thought about not having enough time to do it, whether it is thinking classical music is just outdated and my kids can't relate to it, or many other thoughts that go along with this topic. But with that said, I have been asked this question a lot, and I've also have experience with bringing classical music into my music classroom in a relevant and engaging way. So I'm gonna give you 10 ways that you can bring classical music into your classroom and you can pick and choose from this episode what you like, what would work with your students and go from there. There is a blog post that goes right along with this episode you will find in the show notes. So make sure you look there uh, as well. So with that said, we're gonna just go ahead and jump right in. Number one, share stories of the composers. I don't care if it's a composer from the 1800s or a classical composer from today. Your students, when they hear the word classical music, they don't really understand the composer, um, who they were, their story, any setbacks they had in life, struggles they may have faced, what caused them to want to write music in the first place or to be a musician. I feel like just like when you read stories to your students in your classroom, you a lot of times talk about the author. Who are they? Where are they from? What made them write the story? What did they like to do as a kid? Did they like to read? Did they write to like to write stories? So the same way I think as music educators, we forget about bringing these composers to our students in a real and meaningful way and talking about them like they're human beings, you know, not just Beethoven. He wrote this, Bach wrote this, but who were they? Who were they? And so, I mean, go back to that music history class. We had to take it as a music education major. I know it was very long and a lot of stuff crammed into one semester, but think back to your knowledge of the composers, do some research, try to figure out what would your students really be interested in? Maybe make a timeline of their life and, you know, where they were born. What, how many siblings did they have? What kind of neighborhood did they grow up in? Uh, things that your students can relate to. And so when your students get to know about the composers, real stories, like who they actually were, they're going to find a new appreciation for this person And it probably will cause their music to be a little bit more real to your students. And they're going to be a little bit more interested in learning about their music. So number one is to share stories. Number two, incorporate discussions and center it around SEL. I know SEL is huge, social emotional learning. So when you're incorporating discussions with your students, you're naturally bringing social emotional learning into your music room. 
So one way to do this is while your students are listening to various musical pieces, have them discuss how the music makes them feel. Also tell your students there's no right or wrong answer because it's your feelings. How are you feeling when listening to this music? You will get answers like, I'm bored, or it makes me sad when it's definitely a happy piece. But listen, have them explain, expand upon it further, find out why are they feeling that way. Maybe it's new to them. Maybe they don't know how to listen to a classical piece because they just never have before. So allow them to honestly express their feelings with each other, really openly and honestly have feedback and listen to each other's opinions. Discussions can also center around how music brings us together and how it's really cool how every student is listening to the same piece, yet feeling different emotions from it. It's so neat how that happens. And if you do look in the blog post that I linked to that goes with this episode, when you look at point number two, you'll see a blog post I linked inside of the blog post that uh, I wrote years and years ago about how music unites us. So that's a great one to read to read through as well. Number So number two was incorporating discussions with your students. Number three, relate classical music to the music of today. How do you do that? There's a few different ways, but I'm just going to give you a couple of things to kind of get your brain turning in how to continue doing this on your own. When you're having discussions with your students, you can talk about music that your students are familiar with. Narrow it down to one song. Okay, listen to that song together in class. And then what you're going to do is talk about their various musical tastes. Who likes this song? It's a popular song. Maybe all the students or most students are familiar with it. Something that's played on the radio. Who's familiar with this song? What do you like about it? What genre or style of music is it? Who's the musical artist? Then while exploring those different songs or song, it's up to you how you want to do this. Then play a classical piece of music. And then you ahead of time when you're lesson planning will decide what classical piece would go great to compare or contrast against this popular song that you're going to be using in your class. So while you're playing the two different examples, classical and a popular song, I want you to have the students to compare and contrast the music they're hearing. Talk about what are the melodies like? What do you hear the melody like? Are there verses and choruses? What kind of rhythms do you hear? What instruments did this composer decide to use? And what instruments are you hearing in this other song? So just talk about what makes them the same, what makes them different. And you're going to start seeing your students form connection points between music that maybe they have never been familiar with before. Number So number three, relate classical music to the music of today. Number four, experience music in the movies. Uh, I want you to ask your students what one of the last movies is that they saw. It doesn't matter if it's animated or non-animated. It does not matter. So after you do that, have a discussion about, is there a song that stood out to you? What song did you hear? And most of your students will probably start singing a song or name a song that had words, obviously. But then I want you to think of a movie that used a lot of classical music. Star Wars is a great example. Most of your students should be familiar with the theme song to Star Wars. Um, Or maybe have a brother or a sister that's really into it. They've probably heard it around is what I mean. So what I want you to do is let's just use Star Wars as an example. And yes, there's a lot of Star Wars movies. But I want you to play an important scene of that movie. And it can be a two-minute snippet. It does not need to be long for copyright purposes for that matter. But play like a two-minute snippet. And I want you to play it with the music. And then I want you to mute the TV and play the scene without music. Just play it quietly. And your students are going to be able to obviously hear the music. And then they're going to not hear the music. And so I want you to start another, we can keep talking about discussions, but have a discussion about what caused you to feel a different way when the music was playing versus when it wasn't playing. Maybe they've never stopped to think about how music enhances the movies that they're watching, the experiences they're having when watching the movies. So taking out the musical portion of a scene in a movie 
it's going to help them realize how important contributing classical music, or any music for that matter, really is in creating the mood in the scene. So number four, experiencing music in the movies. Number five, bring in a teaching artist. Now, bringing in a teaching artist, whether it is in person or virtually, to play their instrument live and to share their story about being a musician is going to be so awesome for your students. They're going to go from knowing people play instruments realizing what an orchestra is because you've covered that in a unit throughout the school year to seeing an actual musician playing their instrument, whatever that might be, and getting to ask them questions and to see the way they're, let's say a violin, their bow is moving on the strings and to ask this person about their, their story about learning that instrument as a child. And how do they become a professional musician? A lot of times students don't understand the path from, I'm learning an instrument to now I'm a professional musician. How did they get there? Students learn, like I said, about the different various instruments of the orchestra, have done some listening to classical music, but being able to really interact with a professional musician brings a whole new level of connection points to your students. In episode 187 of this podcast, Alex, Allison Russo came on to talk about bringing in teaching artists and how to do it, how to go about it, how to get them in your music room. So if this is something you're interested in and you're just not quite sure where to start, I would encourage you after you listen to this episode to go back to episode 187 where she gives some fantastic points about how to do that. Number five, so was bringing in teaching artists. Number six is to show classical student musicians. Now, of course, bringing in teaching artists is an amazing experience. Like I will never undermine that. It's so important. But another great idea is to show your students musicians who are around the same age as them. Not only that, show students musicians who look like them, come from similar areas and neighborhoods who enjoy playing lots of different styles of music. They, a lot of times, don't realize that kids, although they see a student maybe going to the orchestra or they hear about their friend taking private lessons, they never really have experienced what that's like. So when you're talking about bringing in student, I'm sorry, teaching artists into your classroom, if you know there's a student in your room who's a classically trained musician. I was a classically trained pianist, and I remember my music teacher sometimes having me play my instrument for the students. And some of them really, really were like, oh my gosh, like I've never heard a kid my age play an instrument. So maybe have that, have like a mini talent show where you're having a student in your classroom play their instrument for their peers. There is a website called Black Violin. And the reason I love this site, well, a lot of reasons, but these are two musicians who play string instruments and they talk about their experience of learning these stringed instruments, their journey into learning classical music, and also how they play their, they play other styles of music on their instruments. It brings music education to students and where they're able to relate to, if you're, you teach students who are black, they're able to relate to musicians who are black. So I think it's great to show students, kids their age, who are learning instruments, but also people who have skin colors that are just like theirs, where it shows them that classical music can be learned by anyone. So number six is show classical student musicians. Number seven, give students the opportunity to create. Hearing classical music is amazing, obviously. Like, it's great. There's there's like no other experience like it. Watching performers in being a part of experience that and seeing their hands move and things like that is awesome. But part of bringing classical music into the music room is also giving students the opportunity to create their own music. Now, if you're not an orchestra director or you're not teaching band and you're an elementary music teacher, this is not going to look like you teaching students how to play an orchestral instrument. What I mean by giving students the opportunity to create is giving them hands-on experiences like adding 
their own beat to music. Maybe they're listening to a classical piece and they are adding some kind of beat underneath it. Maybe they are moving to the classical music. They are creating movement to go with it. Or maybe they're even creating and composing their own bars. Maybe you instruct them to create another verse. You pick out one of the melody lines and students are able to add on to that. They can do this in a center activity. I have a blog post all about centers that's linked in the blog itself. And also, if you listen back to episode 170 on the podcast, you will hear me talk about centers, how I did it in my music room before it was even a thing. (laughs) I think I did it. But this is a way you can definitely have students in center activities, create music along with their own music along with a classical music piece. They can work in small groups with partners or even on their own in a classroom setting as well. So number seven is giving students the opportunity to create. Number eight, find classical music in popular songs. There is a website called Who Sampled, and on this site, you can search for any song, and it will tell you if this popular song sampled a classical music piece. Students will discover on a website like this that a lot of popular music has sampled other music and it is going to be neat to kind of be eye opening like, oh, this isn't just old music from back in the day, but a lot of the musicians in the musical artists I listen to today are using classical music in their music. So it's so neat to see those aha moments happen in your students and to see the connection points forming between what they know and what they're learning. So number eight is find classical music in popular songs. Number nine is play an instrument of the orchestra game. There are a lot of different games you can play for students to li- to uh, learn about the instruments of the orchestra and to retain what they're learning. One of my favorites is called Instrument Four Corners. Basically, you have what it sounds like, an instrument family in each corner, woodwind, brass, strings, percussion. You will say an instrument like clarinet and they need to walk to the corner of the room where that family is. So instead of just learning about the instruments of the orchestra, students can listen to the different instrument families. Then after they do that, they can identify the different instruments in that family. And once they're ready, they can play a game like the one I just mentioned or a different one that you already know that you would love for them to play as well. So number nine is play an instrument of the orchestra game. And last but not least is number 10 is play interactive games and activities online. Now, there are a lot of different websites where students can explore classical music, instruments of the orchestra, the composers. One of my favorites is called Classics for Kids. And this is a great site where students can, like I just said, play a lot of different games and compose their own music for that matter. So this is a great idea. If you're doing a unit and students are learning about various composers and different styles of music and they're going really heavy into classical music, then they can definitely compose their own music. And you can talk to them about putting various things to their song like tempo and form and dynamics and talk about key signature, time signature, all those good things. And on a a site like Classics for Kids, they can listen, play games, and interact with instruments of the orchestra in a very hands-on way. So I want to encourage you to not be stuck when it comes to including classical music in your music room. There are so many ways to go about it. So many other ways I didn't even mention today. Read stories to your students too. Show them pictures and books. There's so many connection points that can be formed from that too. Have an amazing day and I would love for you to share with me how are you doing this? How are you wanting to do this moving forward? And let me know if you have any questions. I can't wait to continue supporting you and to bring you new episodes soon. Have a great day. Well, hey there. Thank you so much for listening into the Elementary Music Teacher Podcast. There is an exclusive Facebook group just for listeners of this podcast and any elementary music teacher called the Elementary Music Teacher Community Facebook Group. Come on over and join us there where we have conversations around the podcast episodes and encourage each other each and every week. And also head to my website, thedomesticmusician.com. I have some free resources there that you can download to help you gain traction in your classroom today 
as well as the blog and the membership site and all kinds of other goodies to help you keep going in your music teaching journey. I cannot wait to keep connecting with you and encouraging you and spurring you on in your journey of teaching elementary music. Hang in there, have an amazing week, and I will see you soon.